Another book with Amy and Laurie's storyline is Mary Young's The Hair of Redcliffe, and this book appeared when Louisa May Alcott was 21. It tells about a rich young man called Sir Guy Morville, and he falls in love with his cousin whose name is Amy Edmondstone. Yes, the girl's name is Amy. The connections between Laurie and Guy are very obvious. They are both orphans who live with their grandfather. Maybe someday I will make an episode where I compare Guy and Amy to Laurie and Amy. In Little Woman, you know, Joe and Friedrich have the two when they speak to each other so they can feel closer to each other. And Amy and Laurie have the My Lady and My Lord. Guess what? In the Hair of Redcliffe, Sir Guy calls Amy as My Lady and she calls him as her Lord. I think there is a lot of evidence that show that Louisa May Alcott very likely planned these marriages already when she was writing part one. Perhaps even earlier, since she had read some of these stories since childhood. There is a reference to the wide, wide world in part one of Little Woman. It is mentioned in one of the early chapters that Joe was reading and crying over the wide, wide world in the apple tree. So we have 15-year-old Joe March reading a story that has very clear Joe and Friedrich storyline in it. Then in the chapter Lawrence Boy... Joe has been reading The Hair of Redcliffe, which has the Amy and Laurie type of couple. I rest my case. And if you don't believe me, just read Little Woman, it's all there. And just to let you all know, I have started a new Instagram account. It's called Podcasting Little Woman. If you like this podcast, do come and chat with me there as well. And I dedicate this to all of you who who would like to see Laurie's growth process in the adaptations as well. This is Small Umbrella in the Rain, Little Woman Podcast, Laurie's Proposal to Amy, Deep Analysis. Learning to Forget Amy's lecture did Laurie good. Tom, of course, he did not own it till long afterward. Men seldom do. For when women are the advisors, the laws of creation don't take the advice till they have persuaded themselves that it is just what they intended to do. Then they act upon it, and if it succeeds, they give the weaker vessel half the credit of it. If it fails, they generously give her the whole. Laurie went back to his grandfather and was so dutifully devoted for several weeks that the old gentleman declared the climate of Nice had improved him wonderfully, and he had better try it again. There was nothing the young gentleman would have liked better, but elephants could not have dragged him back after the scolding he had received. Bright, forbid, and whenever the longing grew very strong, he fortified his resolution by repeating the words that had made the deepest impression. I despise you. Go on, go and do something splendid that will make her love you. Lowry turned the matter over in his mind so often that he soon brought himself to confess that he had been selfish and lazy, but sorts of vagaries, till he has lived it down. He felt that his blighted affections were quite dead now, that being done, he felt that he was ready to hide his stricken heart and still where he had musical friends, and fell to work with the firm determination to distinguish himself. But whether the sorrow was too vast to be embodied in music, or music too eternal to uplift a mortal bow, he soon discovered that the requiem was beyond him, just at present. It was evident that his mind was not in working order yet, and his ideas needed clarifying, for often in the middle of plaintive strain he would find himself humming a dancing tune that vividly recalled the Christmas ball at Nice, especially the stout Frenchman, and put an effectual stop to tragic composition for the time being. So here we have Laurie thinking his time in Nice and humming the tune of the Christmas ball. We can already see that his thoughts have swift towards Amy. Then he tried an opera, for nothing seemed impossible in the beginning. But here again, unforeseen difficulties beset him. He wanted Cho for his hearing and called upon his memory to supply him with tender recollections and romantic visions of his love. But memory turned a traitor, and as if 
possessed by the perceived spirit of the girl, would only recall Joe's oddities, faults and freaks. Thank you so much for listening. Link to the full episode, Lover's Proposal to Amy, Deep Analysis, is in the description. Take care and make good choices. Bye.